but where I'm at, they didn't have any strict rules. And, uh, have you ever been tuning across the band and has seen a signal and wanted to really make a definitive uh, measurement on intermodulation distortion or occupied bandwidth? Well, this is a great opportunity to show just how we can measure the actual uh, IMD uh, scale of a particular signal. And this particular emission is a J3E emission. It's on upper sideband, and it's a person uh, uh, in conversation on the 20 meter amateur radio band. Now, we're going to take some uh, measurements here, and we're going to be looking at the uh, out of band products. Uh, of this particular radio, which I believe is an FTDX 3000. So before we start, if you'll notice the, the numbers in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, they're real important. We're going to be taking some DBM measurements from these, and we're going to be doing some calculations uh, that are going to be able to uh, relate to us uh, the uh, IMD and the out-of-band products uh, that this particular signal is experiencing. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we we're going to do is employ the peak hold function of the spectrum analyzer. Now here we're starting to see the actual peaks of the modulation uh, spectrum come into play. And I know it looks just a little bit strange, but this is the same signal and we're going to go ahead and just reset this maybe a few times he's still talking you can see all the energy start to develop uh, within the signal and now we can start to do some real interesting measurements i'm going to just uh, turn a little crosshair on here so let's look at the uh, about where the uh, the center of the peaks are here if you'll notice in the lower uh, left hand corner here we're starting to see some measurements, about minus 60 dBm at this particular level. Let's say I wanted to know how much uh, energy then was on the unwanted sideband. Let's go 1,000 cycles on the unwanted sideband and take a measurement. Uh, so looks like about uh, right around 1,000 cycles here. And we're seeing about minus, right around minus 80, uh, maybe a little better. So if we take the difference now between where the majority of the peaks of the signal were, which was right around here, uh, represented as minus 60 dBm, and then we look at this, and we're saying, well, that's about minus 80 dBm, then what we can do is do a subtraction between these two numbers. And in this case, the difference between minus 60 and minus 80 is 20 dB down. So all of this energy here is about 20 dB down from the primary peak of the signal uh, in this particular example. And as you can see, if we were to go out 5 kilohertz away, we could do the same measurement, 5 kilohertz positive, and we're seeing around minus 90 dB right in that uh, particular uh, area uh, here at 14.310. So we could do the same thing. We could say minus 60, uh, roughly at this example, and minus 90 would be about 30 dB down, around 5 kilohertz away. And the same thing is true if we take any uh, particular part of this uh, spectrum, we could take these same kind of measurements. So it's a very, very interesting way of looking at a signal, and it's very, very helpful in actually gaining uh, intelligent uh, information on how uh, energy is actually spectrally uh, modulated with a particular emission. And this is a really good example just showing uh, a typical uh, single sideband station and why really uh, the actual modulated energy uh, typically uh, is not a one-to-one -one relationship between the audio spectrum and the RF spectrum when it comes to uh, the emission on the air. And that's why care should be taken to try to maintain a one-to-one -one ratio between the AF and RF footprint uh, on a J3E emission, of course, twice that on A3E, for example. And that's why using an oscilloscope is very important. 
uh, looking at linearity, looking at uh, a trapezoidal pattern, for example, looking at the input and output of an amplifier, and so on, can really help. And of course, the game changer really being adaptive pre-distortion, uh, such as uh, this system employs on on transmit if you use it on transmit. So it's a very good uh, it's a very good way to uh, really uh, clean uh, things up. Well, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I hope you did. Uh, I've always found this uh, pretty interesting, and of course, you could uh, employ this technique on uh, really uh, any signal you find and really uh, come up with some better ideas of out-of-band products. Uh, typically, you'll see most people are about 20 to 25 dB down uh, with their out-of-band products, maybe about a kilohertz uh, uh, on the unwanted sideband and so on. That's usually a pretty good uh, marker, about one kilohertz on the unwanted sideband and about maybe one kilohertz uh, in the middle of the uh, main uh, uh, signal that you're measuring start there uh, or wherever the peak really is uh, and that's a good uh, that's a good way to go well in the future I'll be doing uh, another video uh, next on uh, really how to uh, read a two-tone uh, IMD test and what that really is and what it really is not and we'll go through some other things and uh, talk about other topics like trapezoids uh, looking at a trapezoidal pattern on an amplifier and uh, interpreting amp view which is another uh, uh, particular uh, product uh, within a piece of software that the apache labs uh, sdrs run well i hope you enjoyed this video uh, and again thanks for watching my name is tyler i'm amateur radio operator kilo alpha zero kilo alpha seven three and not that great uh, the band's just not there and uh, it's supposed to get better and better but it hasn't hasn't turned around